It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is information sources for seniors. And joining me is John Fredrickson, publisher, Senior Scene Magazine. Welcome, John. Hey, Joe. Thanks for having me today. Ah, uh, listen. The thanks, I want to say this first. The thanks is not for John to, me, it's for me to thank him for promoting us in this beautiful magazine called Senior Scene Magazine. And the reason I think it's beautiful is because if you read it and you look at it, you'll see that what you've done, John, is you focus on seniors. Too many people focus about seniors. And it, all, it seems like we're always being told what we need to do as seniors. On the other hand, it's nice to have a magazine that describes what seniors think they need themselves. And I've become much more aware of this since I happen to be, well, right now I'm a senior, senior citizen. Once, <laughs> once you pass 80, you, 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 you're, you're called a senior, senior citizen. I'll develop a new name. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, that's just my name. You know, we, that's the other thing. You know, I'm going to digress just for a second, but, you know, people, you have your name, and like I was in the Navy, I put Joe Steckler, comma, Captain USN, RET for retired. I've seen people make up all kind of initials and put them after their name. They mean nothing. But people see all these capital letters after somebody's name and say, God, that person must really be important. A lot of credentials, huh? <laughs> well, when we started out with Senior Scene Magazine, one of our goals was to make it a voice for seniors. And we're trying to stay true to that. So it fits into what you're talking about, that the seniors are speaking, not somebody else telling you what a senior is or what a senior should do. It, it's the voice of the seniors. And I think it's, uh, I think the public and corporations are becoming more aware that many seniors fall into different categories. Uh, it's, it, it, it's not a one thing fits all anymore. There are seniors that are extremely active, seniors that want to be involved. And it's just like uh, if you go back to what we talk about, the 16-inch guns on the battleships, you know, like train center line and secure when you retire. You just train those guns fore and aft, and you let them sit there pointed up in the sky. You don't do anything with them. Senior brains are still pretty good, John. <laughs> yeah, and we're going through a little bit of an educational process when we talk to potential advertisers. And trying to get them away from some of the stereotypes of seniors. And so you'll see advertisers in here, um, travel agencies, uh, movie theaters, um, Disney World, that are recognizing the vitality, the viability uh, of the senior population. It's, it's been a little bit of a struggle getting that education across, but I believe it. You know, I, I, I'm always fighting the, the stereotype that uh, some people have about seniors, and it's just changing. How long have you been doing Senior Senior Magazine now? We started in 2000, and it's uh, been growing ever since then. We, we saw a need where the traditional newspapers in the area, and which wasn't here at, uh, at the time, were kind of starting to ignore seniors or, or never really said much about them, didn't have information about activities, events, or just maybe finance or entertainment that the seniors specifically would be interested in. They're just kind of ignoring that. So we saw that need, and so we started Senior Scene Magazine to address it. And uh, it, it, it's certainly taking on its own life in that process and, and kind of becoming what it needs to be as the years progress, and I guess yeah, 14 years now. Yeah. 
That's about, uh, about the same time I started my radio show, December 7th, 2000. December 7th, okay. Yeah, so, we're, we're not that date, but uh, close to it, yeah. Yeah, it was, um, it was amazing to me that, uh, and of course in my lifetime and working with seniors and people that care for seniors and home care organizations, um, we make a lot of assumptions. We assume that everybody knows everything they need to know about certain situations when in fact it's been my experience that there is a whole lot of information out there that people need to know they don't have it and they don't have access to it and the reason they don't have access is they simply don't know about it. So education is hard. Yeah, I certainly don't have the insight that you have into the agencies and organizations in Brevard County that are available. But it seems to me there are a lot of agencies that can help seniors. Probably some of the most uh, frequent phone calls I get is from a senior needing some kind of a service or help with something, uh, whether it's legal, financial, and they don't know where to go. Um, our seniors, um, they need an advocacy. They need uh, a lot of help. It, it's not automatic and, and it's not readily visible and anything we can do to get information out and help the seniors is going to go a long way for the group here in our county. You know, in the short time you and I have known each other, we've never really used those words you just used uh, about people calling you. Do you get a lot of phone calls from, from people asking about senior services? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of times, I don't personally know the answers and I steer them to different organizations that I'm familiar with. Uh, now, now you, helping you, you seniors of Brevard definitely is uh, my go-to go organization and, uh, and I feel good about that. I mean, that's something I personally can trust and endorse and uh, we'll definitely be sending those, those folks who I can't help uh, to this organization, to your organization. You know, my wife has said to me many times over the years, she said, how do you get people to tell you their finances or their personal information, uh, what they're really, what their problems are? And I said, Terry, it's been my experience that people somehow tend to know if a person is sincere in what they're trying to do. And if you can establish that trust and you can get people to open up to you, I have found over the last 25 years that most of the problems that seniors have can be addressed. They can't all be fixed, but if we don't know about the problem, there is absolutely no way we can do anything about helping to make the problem become smaller in size. And that's what I like about your magazine. And I look at some of the stories you have in there. Yeah, you've got advertising there. But that's the, way, that's the way we pay for things. That's how, right. you, know, you have to make a living. You have to pay to publish this magazine. But... I looked and so many of your services that you that advertise your magazine are services that do assist seniors. That makes it's, it's sort of a logical connection. We recently had a meeting, uh, our first meeting of the Senior Advocacy Council that this organization is trying to develop a, a group of people, a group of people's uh, viewers that will promote senior needs to our county commissioners to the extent that the county commissioners will cause the county staff to develop an aging plan. And, and this is not anything new, it's not rocket science or anything. And I, I, I mentioned at the meeting, I don't know if you remember, John, you were at the meeting. Definitely. So, uh, but, oh, share a few thoughts with our viewers about what you thought about the first meeting of the advocacy group. Well, it was an interesting cross-section of people from the county, people with different experiences, di people with different professional levels that are going to bring a good mixture 
of ideas for solving some of these issues that you're mentioning about advocacy and the personal experiences, whether they're personal problems or whether they're personal solutions, um, it's, it's going to be a good background. And most of the people were free to speak, and that's going to be good. I mean, uh, You say they were not afraid to speak, were they? No, not at no. all. They were free to speak. And the thing, like there was one lady that talked about a nine-year quest mm. to obtain Section 8 housing. And Section 8 housing, folks, briefly what it is, it's, it's housing that's sort of uh, supplemented by uh, state and federal money uh, for lower or disadvantaged people. In other words, a dry place to live. We're not, we're not talking about the Taj Mahal. We're talking about people that can live in a, in a, in a home that has a, maybe a living room, a dining room, or a, uh, at least a bedroom and a kitchen, and it's dry and, and hopefully free of uh, rodents and everything else. And, and it, it's, it's amazing to me, John, what you can put your finger on in, in the year 2015 about what's not right for people to live in. But the Section 8 housing is something that the county has a prime responsibility for developing that. They get state and federal money to help develop that housing. Now, I'm not saying that the county is going to be able to, to build enough Section 8 housing to take care of every housing need for everybody in Burke County. But we need to have a plan on how to get there. And I, I, I sense that, like your magazine, by accepting articles and, and, and partnering with us like you have done, will help spread the word. And if people read our magazine because they want to be an advocate for seniors or they want to see a better way to help themselves age with dignity, find out about decent services, we all win. Yeah, in fact, that gives me a little thought about taking that perspective with the magazine, kind of a call for advocates, people that want to help, you know, and steer them to your organization or others, uh, that will step up for seniors. And I want to make a comment about Section 8. Uh, a new facility just opened up in uh, Coco that was HUD Finance. It is a wonderful facility. Well, it's brand new now, uh, you know, kitchen, uh, living area, uh, bedroom, a dining facility, and it's first class. And you know, it's don't get the image of some kind of rundown facility, right? Because it's subsidized. I mean, there's good, nice places for uh, placement of seniors that need that help. So, and right here in Coco. But just think for a minute, John. If we have a really good way to disseminate and educate people about what is available, what needs are needed to be fixed, and developing a plan so that we have something, a guidance system, if you will, on how to get to an end point. Uh, my problem, I chaired the county commission for three years. I could never make the other members of the commission I could never convince them that we needed a written plan so we knew how to get to where we wanted to get. Uh, if, if you just every month said, oh, well, I need articles for Senior Scene Magazine, what kind of a magazine do you think you'd have? <laughs> yeah, and, and in fact, uh, what you're talking about now, um, the organization, I keep talking about helping seniors, steering them in the right direction. But what you're talking about, and I, and I keep forgetting, is that you're talking about making sure those services are there in the county. Going to the right people in the county, the government officials, and saying, hey, you're missing the boat here. You know, this is not what the seniors need. That's going to be such an important part of the organization. You hit, you've defined the whole darn thing in a very few succinct words. That's exactly what we're trying to accomplish. We want the county commissioners, the county planning staff to realize we do not have the infrastructure in place we need mm -hmm. to have. And 
one of the reasons this is so important is because of all the different people that get on the shows, we may talk about um, Medicaid needs in, in the state of Pennsylvania. A person on Medicaid in Pennsylvania moves to Florida. Well, the requirements for, for uh, serving Medicaid clients in Pennsylvania are different from what they do in Florida. If a person moves from one state to Florida and assumes that the same criteria are going to prevail, that's not necessarily true. The sad part about it is they find out after the fact. After. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a professor of naval science at Auburn University, we had a retired Marine colonel there that was bedridden for a number of months. And all of a sudden, he got a bill from $90,000. And it came to me. I was the office, professor of the ROTC unit. And Jimmy said to me, he said, what do I do about this? I said, well, how did you get it in the first place? He said, I don't know. It turned out that the nursing service was required by law to do what they call nursing notes. And it was a state of progress of every day. And as long as pro progress was being made, the government would continue to pay for those nursing services. But without the documentation, they had no cause to pay. These are things that, unless we do a better job of getting requirements out for people, they don't understand that. And that's, that's what you're doing. Senior Scene Magazine, how, how much of the county do you cover, John? I think right. that's a good question. People need to know this. We are all over the county, every zip code, and a little bit into uh, eastern Orange County and northern uh, Indian River County but definitely all over Brevard County. Uh, any city, uh, uh, non-incorporated uh, areas, there'll be magazines out at different locations. On our website is a list of the locations. You can find uh, all the specific addresses of these uh, locations where senior scene can be picked up, and it is free. So uh, th th we find that's the best way to get into hands. What are, you know, I have to admit, I don't know your your email or your what is what are, and, and and we'll make sure that uh, that our media guy puts the the on, 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 under your name on on the tape what is uh -huh. it sure the website is senior scene magazine dot com uh, I'm sorry senior scene mag dot com see I uh, <laughs> get the right thing <laughs> senior scene mag, mag dot com. com right Right, and, and we have the entire magazine in a flip display kind of there, links to different cities and different organizations in the county, and a lot of back articles. So it, it's easily arranged, easily, easily uh, surfed. So, uh, do, you have the whole, do you have the magazine on the, on the internet too? Right, the whole magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'll see the articles, you'll see the advertisers uh, on the magazine every month, and we save back issues on, on the website also. And you know something else, and this is something I, I I don't think we talk about a lot. Organizations advertise in publications for publicity. It gets them business. That's how they make a living. But I've also found in most of the home care type magazines or senior publications that I have read, most of the organizations that advertise there are ones that I would not hesitate to call myself to perform a service. Have you ever noticed that? Well, and I think there's a reason for that. Uh, it kind of goes along with our experience. Over the many years, the group of advertisers have been really fine to work with, good folks. And you get a feeling when you first start talking to these folks if there's a problem and you just back away. Uh, so it's it's a subconscious endorsement, I guess. But it, and a lot of times people that are in this business, this senior service business, they're there for more than just money. There's you know there's not a lot of money in that in a lot of cases. So they're there. They want to help seniors. They might have a personal experience or family member that kind of steered them in that direction as a vocation, and and you know. They're by and large good folks, and uh, you f should feel comfortable with them. 
And uh, I'll, I'll add to it, though, if I hear of anything uh, or if somebody has a bad experience, I would like to hear about it. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that's ex our experience, too. But Senior Z Magazine, like Hometown News, Spotlight Magazine, all these address senior needs, but they're addressing local senior needs. And when somebody picks up Senior Z Magazine, uh, Show people how easy it is to pull out. <laughs> how, how, we have we have our new, I really have an ulterior motive for almost everything I do, folks. But in this thing, we have a pull-out section that John was kind of to put our newsletter in Senior Scene Magazine. That's my cue. Okay, in the center fold is the four pages of the newsletter that Joe's organization puts out, and it too uh, supplements the information available, but specifically for what his organization is doing. But it is easy to pull out and hold on to. Uh, and we do that for a reason and uh, to, to help Joe and his organization. Well, <clears throat> you know, what we're doing here, John, is by this mutual effort, we're, we're doing a better job of educating seniors and those that care for seniors. Uh, we can help you promote your magazine. You can help us promote connecting seniors to services, and that's what the end result should be. Um, we are finding, and I'm sure you find, that people that read a good article in your magazine or see a, an advertiser that actually performs and does what they say they're going to do, they want to return and read more so that they can do a better job of ensuring that they get good, honest, cost-effective services. And I think that uh, one of the reasons that uh, we've been successful in, uh, in the senior care business is that people trust us. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't tell somebody that I could do something unless I could do it. And I think that's extremely important for people to know. Yeah. The media uh, products that you just mentioned, locally owned, locally managed, uh, they have the desire, they have the capability to focus on local folks and what they think, what we think is the best for the residences here. And, um, and it shows. And uh, that's a good point to remember, that yep. these are locally owned, locally managed uh, media. Has it been your experience that um, or have you come across other counties in Florida that do the same type of thing that we're doing here in Brevard County as far as having a, uh, a link between radio, television, printed media, newspaper work, website, Facebook? I don't know of any other, any other county that does what we do here in Brevard County. No, uh, where I started the magazine, uh, my other experience, I did see some of the organizations, and definitely not as many as here, is not as focused as here. And now with the effort to bring these together, uh, that is something entirely new to me. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, WMEL or uh, one of our, the media, print media you mentioned, um, that's important. It's easy for us on the media side for sure to think, well, we're reaching all the people we need to reach, but we're not. And the phone calls we get uh, are evidence of that. that it proves uh, the yeah, point. Yeah, we need yeah. to do more. All these services are, are wonderful, but they're meaningless if people don't know about them. And I found that the most common thread that goes in to all senior needs is communications. And the failure to communicate a need, the failure to answer that senior in a manner that the senior wants to express what his needs really are, is so detrimental to, um, to establishing what the real criteria for senior services should be. And I think it, that's something that you saw in that first, first meeting of the advocacy group. What is John Fredrickson, publisher of Senior Scene Magazine, what do you think that we need to do in Brevard County to bring together the government, 
local organizations and seniors themselves. You well, got about <laughs> 52 seconds. Establishing the credibility, establishing to the government officials the fact that it is a true voice of a population here in the county, getting that baseline of authority, of credibility, and bringing that forward, whether it's through one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations, whether it's through the media, and then taking that forward uh, to bring these government organizations to bear on what they need to be doing. You know, maybe they don't know what they need to do. You know, maybe it's as simple as that. And going forward with that kind of approach, let me help you, you know, let me help you set out to help the senior population of Brevard County. I'm glad, I'm glad that we've got that on tape because I'm gonna use that because <laughs> you pretty well summed up what they need to be thinking about. And John, I wanna thank you for being here with me today and, and, and helping the dialogue continue about seniors helping seniors and helping seniors. But I appreciate your being here. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Joe. Thank you. And thank you, viewer, for watching today's show. Um, it's extremely important that we all have a better understanding of what the needs are and how we can meet the needs and not waste valuable resources.